So I don't understand uh, TV stuff or cable things. I'm a cord cutter slash I don't don't know how to watch TV shows. So this is apparently a power inserter for something to do with direct TV. And I d don't know what this is for. So let's let's do a quick Google search and make it look like I know what I'm talking about. Signal to IRD's power to S W. The heck, any of those things? As Jimmy and O D U only. Yeah, we could pretend I know what that is, but no, I don't. So this is for powering the dish. You put this in line. Ah, I dropped a screwdriver in my foot. So yeah, you throw this in line between your form of cable box thingy uh, in between that and the dish that goes outside. And this provides the essential 21 volts power that it requires to run at all. And if you don't have it, it does nothing. Yay. So let's take out some of the cords and pop it open. Can't get the coax off. Okay, now that I can hold this to the camera without the dumb coax on it, it works from 2 to like 2.15 gigahertz lose about 1.5 db of signal but you can't run without this or some sort of equivalent so you expect that you expect that loss already it's 100 to 120 volts at 60 hertz um and since its output is 21 volts at 1.2 amps and it weighs nothing we know it's a switch mode power supply I don't open this because i will get shocked and die so let's open it up I liked one of the Amazon reviews. It's like, uh, hey, my cable company failed to provide me with this, so my TV wasn't working. As soon as I found out I needed one of these and installed it, it worked great. It's like, well, that's lovely. So you do everything yourself, man. All right, covers off. Here's our little, what do we call those little light pipe diffuser things that uh, makes the LED visible through the case. Okay, I'll just drop that. And here's what just looks like a really basic switch mode power supply and almost nothing for the RF side of things. So that means they're not doing anything too crazy to the signal. They're probably just um, doing things like phantom power or something where they're just throwing voltage down the line. Let's take this out. All right, I think that's all the screws. And this comes right out. Back of the case is nothing fancy. All right, look. This time I have a plastic insulated screwdriver. And so now I can just run it all over and not die of the capacitors on it. Yay. This is how you do things safely. Anyway, so this is now properly discharged. Not that this has run for the past three years or something dumb, but... Uh, Okay, so it looks just like a fairly standard switch mode power supply, like when you get in a laptop or a uh, camera or something else. Let's see, 400 volt. Plastic works well. That guy has a barcode on it. Anyway, so it's a Tycon cap. Oh, must be maybe 68 uh, microfarad or something. Something similar. So here's our choke. This must be the suppression cap on it. So 0.22 microfarad at uh, what, 275 volts AC or about or something like that. Um, see, our filtering choke have anything useful marked on it? Nope. And there's a transformer. It's a Yai Lian. I feel like I've seen that brand before. It looks okay. And the output caps are nice green ones. Let's see. Does that mean it's a legitimate brand or is it more? I think it's more the Tyacon which I don't know anything about them. They look like proper 105 volt rated capacitors though, so that's good. Plenty of good filtering across the uh, transformer with them of V's. Uh, they actually have anti-tracking slot. Lots of room to protect against uh, creepage. Um, we've got spark gaps. Both sides? Nope, just spark gaps on the uh, output side. That's fairly nice. So it's just tiny little support stuff. Do I have any, is it the only driver? Actually, I haven't seen the rectifier yet. Oh, oh, there it is. Here's our rectifier hiding here. You can see it's got the 
four posts to it. Yeah, it's not high enough power to need a heat sink. Oh, there's two transistory type devices or whatever they would be. Here's our box we'll take a look at inside if we can. Oh no, it might be potted completely. Oh, that's the best part is in there. Yeah, I put 21 volts, 1.2 amps. I bet you that you could, yeah, this box has to be doing all the RF magic. So you could just take these off and you've got a power supply right here. Just this is a probably off the shelf power supply, probably for a laptop. Is there a marking we could look it up with? Yeah, let's look this up and see if it's made specifically for this or if this is just a laptop power supply. Ah, oh, bummer. Can't find anything specific to this one, but it's a, yeah, it's a Gentech JTP0713C. Wait a darn second. If we look on the power supply right here. Oh, this thing's magnetic. If we look on the power supply right here. 100 to 240 volts AC, 0. 0.6 amps, 50, 60 hertz. This is a generic universal power supply with this little box strapped right on. So the casing says it can only operate here, which might maybe have something to do with, I don't know, regulations with how the th that works or something, but n there's no reason this won't work universally. So if you want, and it works out that you can cheaply get these power inserters, and they're the high-end-ish ones, you can buy it and just turn it into a nice little laptop power supply if you have a laptop that charges off 21 volts, but it's probably out there, or some sort of similar device that needs around that amount of probably very well-regulated stuff. I mean, everything on here looks nice. Like I said, we can just unscrew this and unsolder this. This box, sadly, I don't think I can get into. Everything on here just looks like a normal high-end switch mode power supply. So that is a very cheap way to get one of these.